with me today is Nighthawk Gold President and CEO Michael Byron. Nighthawk trades under the symbol NHK on the venture. Michael, I want to discuss the drill campaign at the Colomac Gold Project, but let's backtrack a bit. After a few years of some significant pain in the sector, we seem to be stabilizing and have a little momentum. For those not up to speed with Nighthawk, why don't you catch us up on what you guys have been up to the last few years and then take us into the, the campaign at uh, Colomac. Sure. Thanks a lot, Rob, for having me, uh, you know, fill you in and some of your uh, investors and, and uh, audience on Nighthawk Gold is. But I started with this company about eight years ago and uh, um, ventured forth in the Northwest Territories on a property called Damati, and it was a high-grade gold and iron formation thing. So when I, when I first landed, uh, you know, boots on the ground in that part of the world, I quickly saw that this, this deposit was far too rich for it to be a one-hit wonder, and I started looking more afield and getting myself familiar with the lay of the land. Obviously, you're you know you're attracted you know like a moth is to a nice uh, light bulb. You're attracted to Colmac because it, it was a former producer. It was sitting in the middle of the camp, and uh, but it was uh, it was a bankrupt asset that Royal Oak had, and it resorted reverted back to the Crown, and they were responsible for uh, reclaiming and uh, you know basically dismantling the uh, the legacy equipment on site and, and cleaning it up. So we approached I approached the uh, the government and said, look, if you guys are going to put that back into play, let us know, because in the meantime, we staked all around them. We, you know, aggressively went after uh, assets that I saw in the camp that that were of, of similar grade to Damati. But the one thing, you know, you have to remember about this, this area in, in north uh, of uh, Yellowknife is it hadn't been explored much since the 1950s. So it hadn't seen the activity that our traditional mining camps see, you know, in North America or even around the world for that matter, where there's, you know, most of these established camps are 100 plus years old. They've had innumerable companies come in there and spend, you know, tens and, and, and instances, hundreds of millions of dollars in the exploration. This hadn't seen it, but I could see all the pedigree of, of of a of a of an established mining camp, it just hadn't seen activity and it hadn't seen dollars. So that's why why I got interested in this thing. And if, as you alluded to, the markets weren't good from 208 onward. So we were basically, you know, uh, keeping a low profile, trying to watch our burn rates. But all the while, we were slowly building this asset base. It culminated in 2012 when we did the acquisition of Colmac, brought that under our umbrella. Um, but just at, at the point of sale, I, I had managed to track down the last resource that was done by a geologist who was no, obviously moved on from Royal Oak when they went bankrupt. And like all the good old geos, he kept everything. And I was able to get the data, build a resource from that, but, and uh, saw that, geez, you know, the government had under its uh, control uh, an asset that was over, had over a million ounces of gold sitting on surface. Um, left and, and more importantly, it was wide open the exploration potential because it was a uh, you know when you revert to the crown they 're not a you know, mining company, so they 're not going to focus on on the on the opportunity they 're going to focus on cleaning up the mess and then uh, getting it off their books and that 's where we came along so that was the last piece of the puzzle and uh, from that point forward, we control over ninety percent of this gold camp and uh, from there, we began an ambitious drill program. You know, given the temper of the markets at the time, I'd say ambitious was, you know, a few million bucks. Um, and uh, over the years, from 2012 to 2015, we uh, spent about seven and a half million dollars on drilling, which is a very small amount when you think of some of the uh, assets that have been brought forward uh, into production. And uh, during that time, up until 2013, we did a resource update. We uh, we had a compliant resource at that time of 2.1 million ounces at about 1.64 grams. Um, that's kind of uh, exciting for me when I when I think of the amount of money we spent for this asset, which equated to about five dollars uh, an ounce in the ground. That was the purchase price, so off the government, and then we spent another six or seven uh, million bucks and we got it up over 2.1 and that doesn't include the drilling we did in 2014 and 15 so I mean obviously it's a little bit higher so where do we want to go for from here well this thing has got lots of exploration potential it's a distinct geological body that's mineralized from surface meaning it outcrops you know to depth it's not interrupted at depth because a lot of the time deposits here about they're faulted off and, and people can't find the displaced component this one's you know, uninterrupted. Also, it's mineralized to depth. Royal Oak drilled a couple of deep holes before they left. So we know that the, that the, the limitation here is how, you know, what what economic constraints do you have when you when you're trying to exploit this thing to depth, be it either a large tonnage, lower grade open pit, 
or what we discovered it to be, and now we're changing the whole character of Colmac, is it there are distinct high-grade shoots. And, and what do I mean by a high-grade shoot? Um, there are distinct domains of, of, of richer-grade material. So in 2014 was our discovery of one zone we called 1.5, and that cut was uh, uh, 52 meters of 7.8 grams. The true width of that zone was 40 meters. So that's a pretty massive uh, cut. Any, you know, no matter where you look in the in, uh, in the junior mining sector, that's a re- very respectable cut. So our challenge became: let's find the do- dimensions of this. How, meaning, the true size of these these domains. You know, are they going to be able to be mined via an open pit and an underground ramp, so that you're changing the nature of Colmac? Right? You have more of a, uh, you know, uh, more protection against the fluctuations in the gold prices if you've got a higher grade component that you can you can you can exploit in those in those time periods so that's what we're trying to do now is take this thing with this summer's program we've got two drills in operation as we speak we're drilling 10,000 meters this summer roughly you know three and a half to four million dollar program you know we hope to be back in the winter doing something of similar size this I hope will get us as close as we can to a three million ounce criteria um, and that usually kicks off a lot of obviously interest in the in the community more than maybe what people are, are showing these days and uh, but more importantly we'll have to find more of these high grade domains and that'll that'll really show this thing to be something different in, in this sort of the North American landscape because you know there's not too many wide open two to three million ounce deposits sitting out there that haven't been kicked around and passed around to a, a dozen different companies over the past millennia. This thing is, has not seen that sort of activity. And in fact, the, the ore body itself is largely underexplored. So that's what we hope to do in the new year. Um, uh, we will then finish that, that winter program. That'll segue into a resource update. And at the same time, we're, we've commissioned a metallurgical uh, study that will be looking at at uh, the grind nature of, uh, of, the, of the ore and, and how best to d- develop the flow, <clears throat> flow sheets for that. And uh, at that point, in probably in the you know, first, end of first, early second quarter, we'll be in a position to uh, decide whether or not we, we uh, initiate a PEA on this thing. So we'll, then we'll be able to see what the pros and cons of this thing, um, how how economic it will be to to look at um, ramping into the, the higher grade components and so on and so forth. So that'll answer a lot of the questions that we'll have. But I think uh, for me, the, the exciting thing is that um, this thing has not been ex- has not been drilled off. We're not it, we're not commissioning right now a, a, a resource definition program of lining drills up and drilling it off. We're actually looking for higher grade domains because we know at some point you can drill those 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 uh you know you can systematically drill this thing off to to get your numbers but we're looking for the higher grade components and that's the the project that we're involved in now obviously with the drilling comes a uh, news flow any type of schedule on on how you see that coming out as investors do uh obviously plot their watch lists yeah we've we've completed like i said roughly 2000 meters as we speak now with those two drills so i expect uh you know a uh, first batch of results and by that I usually mean four to five holes uh, will release so uh, by early September and we should have four maybe five uh, releases out going forward through uh, late 216 early 217 then the metallurgical work and then kicking off into a new program so the idea now is to keep the news flowing you know we've got great support behind it we've got a good shareholder base um, you know, we've just finished a six million dollar financing. We've got eight point six million in the bank. Uh, you know, so we're we're cashed up, and we have the the funds that we need to you know now to get to you know the summer program completed and and partial winter program and and uh, the support behind us to uh, to take us there. Well, it's certainly been a long time coming, Michael. Um, we certainly have, we'll look forward to news flow um, moving forward, but, uh, I gotta believe that, uh, you're pretty excited about, uh, how things are, uh, are shaping up for, uh, for Nighthawk. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a long wait. We were, you know, I'm, I'm a shareholder of, of gold stocks just like everyone else. And it's been a, it's been a, you know, it's been a trying time, but boy, when it comes back, it sure is exciting. And, and when you can attach your name to something as a geologist, cause this is sort of a, this is my hobby and it's my job. So I enjoy this sort of thing and I enjoy, looking at assets and, and uh, bringing, bringing them to fruition. And, and uh, so, I, you know, I, I have no problem attaching my name to this deposit. 